For those familiar with creation.com, you know that we talk about genetics and how it supports the historical account of the Bible. But today we're going to talk about genetics in the present, about human genetic modifications. And guess what? The future is now. Well, welcome back. I'm Scott Gillis. This is my good friend, Dr. Robert Carter. How are you doing, Rob? Doing great, Scott. Good. Well, you and I have talked about this topic for a few years now, haven't we? Oh, yeah, at least three or four. And genetic modification is something that's in the news recently. In huge ways, yeah. And when I think back, uh, just 50 years ago, we landed on the moon. Yeah. Incredible accomplishment. You know, in the time of Jules Verne and H.G. Wells, those late 1800s and 1900s, an advancement like that was just a dream. It's just science fiction. No, but yeah, yeah we're fiction, never going to be able to it's do not that, true, right? Yeah. right? But now we live in a world where it's absolutely accepted and true. Yeah. And you know, uh, genetic modification uh, is something that isn't new, right? It's been going around for, for decades, a little yeah. while, yeah. right? But this idea of human genetic modification, where we can actually change people in essence, there's some pretty incredible recent news about that, it's, right? It's no longer science fiction. Right. And it's kind of scary. Yeah. So um, a few years ago, I came and I heard some information about something called CRISPR, mm -hmm. right? In fact, uh, just a few months ago, I was in a church and I was coming right before a time when I was doing a question and answer time. And I had, a, I think, about a 16-year-old young lady come up to me and she said, what's your opinion about CRISPR? And I just looked at her baffled. I said, you're 16 years old. How do you know what CRISPR is? And uh, she said, well, uh, uh, someone from the college had come into her high school class and told her about it. And so uh, I actually polled the people that were at that talk. There were over 100 people there. And I said, hey, I'm just interested. A young lady told me she knows what CRISPR is. How many people know what CRISPR is? And you know what? Only her hand went up. <laughs> out of over 100 people. Uh, 10 years from now, that will no longer be true. Well, I even told them, I said, you know what? I said, uh, it, it'll, be, it'll be in the news maybe in three years. You'll know what it is. But it turns out I was wrong. In a way, I was wrong, right? Uh, in many ways, you were wrong. Yeah, because recently, um, Netflix, <laughs> oh, yeah, that the big media giant, they made a series that was uh, talking about CRISPR. Yes, on natural selection. Yeah. Which, for the listening audience, we can't necessarily recommend because of the bad language. Of course. And the subject material is hard for some people. But you and I wrote an article. We did. On creation.com about, and I think if you did a search for unnatural selection, you would come find right that, yeah, that article. It. And we talk about the discoveries that were made. But we have to all admit, it's shocking, isn't it? It is absolutely shocking. How much of that show is real or not, you and I couldn't tell, yeah. but there's nothing they presented that isn't theoretically possible. Right. And that's, um, that's scary. So what were some of the things in general that, that you got out of that, that series regarding CRISPR? Or maybe let me ask you this. Okay. What is what CRISPR? Is CRISPR? What, what is that? I, I guess it's, uh, it stands for something, right? It's it, an it, acronym? It's an acronym from, for a really long, complicated scientific <laughs> phrase. So right. we'll just call it right, CRISPR. Right. But tell me, what in general, can you give me... Uh, an, an idea of what CRISPR is. Back in the 80s, yeah, somebody realized that bacteria have an immune system of sorts. Yeah, When they're exposed to like viral DNA, they can grab a piece of that viral DNA, cut their genome, and stick the piece of virus in there. You mean the bacteria can do that? Yeah, the bacteria can do that. All right. So they can keep like a library of DNA that they've been exposed to. Well, decades later, 2003-ish, yeah. um, a woman named Jennifer Doudna and a couple other people around the world about the same time had this re revelation that, well, that protein, that CRISPR thing, has an RNA, and the RNA is what sticks on the DNA. Well, if, what happens if you change the RNA? You can change where it sticks. That's a pretty amazing uh, thought to come up with that idea. Amazing What does thought. it mean? It means that we can now target any place in any genome we like and stick anything we like at that, at that position. And this is a big change, am I right? Because, you know, for instance, John Sanford, you work with him regularly. Yeah. He's spoken at our conferences and he's written some resources that, that we produce. Um, 
you work with him, and he's the inventor of the gene gun, right? Yeah. I remember before I met him in graduate school, we used to joke, man, if we only had $3 million, <laughs> we could buy one of the gene guns, and making our fluorescent fish would be so much easier. Right, right. But I had no idea I was going to work with this man in the future. That's right. Um, but his invention led to the first generation of, of genetically modified crops. Yeah, yeah, in order to take plants and modify those. But this is kind of like a new phase. It's a completely it's important it's, technology that's going to really change the world. Would you? Am going, I overstating that? You're not understating that. It's going to change the world. Yeah. The world's already changing. Yeah. And the newer versions of this CRISPR-like technologies are more accurate and faster. All right. So according to the research, according to Netflix uh, series, what are some of the things that they're able to do with this new technology? Well, we're not certain how much of the Netflix series is true. Right. But at least the things they present are theoretically possible. Yeah. So they had one person, a little boy, where they literally opened up his eye, peeled back his retina, added new genes, and put his retina back again. Yeah, I remember that. He was going blind, and at the end of the series, he's driving around a racetrack in the yeah. go-kart. Yeah. Whoa. But what we do know, things that have happened, um, just three years after CRISPR was announced, two girls were born in China right. that had genetic modifications done on them which opens up a massive Pandora's box of, of moral and ethical problems. It was kind of shocking news, wasn't it? It, it was shocking because all the bioethicists and all the geneticists in the world had basically said, don't do anything that can be inherited. If you want to experiment on an adult, that's one thing, but don't experiment on what's called the germ line, the cells okay. that, are, that are passed from one generation to the next. So what do you mean by germ line? There's a difference between like, um, you know, if I change my skin cells, yeah, that can't be inherited. Okay. But if I do something to my genome throughout my entire body that can be inherited in the next generation, I might, I might be affecting the next generation. I might be doing it negatively. And maybe generations after and, that. Yeah. And is this CRISPR technology specifically, it's not very clean. Yeah, you can make modification, but it makes lots of mistakes. And sometimes when you when you cut the double-stranded DNA, you might lose the other strand. And so it might stick somewhere else, and all right. of a sudden you have a massive change, and it's not, it's not well controlled. Right. But also, what right do we have to experiment on embryos and babies? Well, that brings some big questions big for, uh, for morality, especially uh, Christianity and the morality that's in the Bible, right? Yeah, I mean, what, you know, this is a thing called informed consent. In, in science. You don't experiment on people without them saying, yeah, you can experiment on me. Right. But a baby has no choice in this matter. That's right. And this particular experiment, they wanted to make these babies uh, HIV resistant. Okay. So supposedly, these two couples, the father had HIV, or which causes AIDS, and the mother did not. Now, that sounds like a, a good use of technology, doesn't it? It's sort of. Okay. But, you know, there's no guarantee that children are going to get it. Um. But what they did was they, they changed a particular gene that we know when people carry it, they are resistant to HIV. Right. And they gave that trait to the girls. Except we also know that people who carry this trait have a whole lot of other problems. Because they're passing on as well. Yeah, and it, it's, a, it's not a neutral mutation. It's not a good thing to have this variation. And, but they gave it to the girls anyway. But, you know, genetic, looking at it genetically the changes weren't, the, the two girls have different changes. Right. And, and it's not... And it was without their consent is the kind of the one of yes. the main important things to remember. But their children will also carry this. That's right. And their children will also carry this. And it's just... And continuing on, again, without consent. And you, yeah. Rob, you and I, we do carpentry. We enjoy doing yeah. uh, millwork and carpentry. We've done some together. And, you know, I think of that standard tool, the hammer, right? can be used to build some wonderful, functional, and beautiful things, but hammer can also be used to damage and destroy things, right? Uh, yeah, it can be very dangerous to hold a hammer in your hand. <laughs> and with any technology, including this one, I mean, there can be, can be used for good, and it could also be used uh, for bad. I mean, could, could someone intentionally do something that would be wrong with such a technology? Um, yes, and that's one of the other issues about this. Um, Genomics is open source. There's no right. 
tight control over the information. Anyone can download any genetic database they want. They can yeah. read the scientific papers. Now, in the Western world, we have a set of laws that prevents us from doing certain things. But that's not true in all places of the world. And it's not true that the government can control what someone's doing in their garage. Yeah, and that's one of the things that kind of shocked me when I was watching that uh, that Netflix series. There were people just in their back shed in their backyard doing genetic modification. So yeah, it's it's available to anybody that has a little bit of knowledge. Yeah, and as we pointed out in the article we wrote, right. the the person they started off with clearly didn't know what he was yeah. doing, yeah, but he was yeah, still yeah. able to do it. Yeah, there were f certain clues that you were given by some yeah. of the things he said and did yeah, that let, let him know that he really didn't know all, uh, certainly not the ramifications of what he yeah. was doing. But he was able to follow a procedure and still do things and modify his dog, supposedly, anyway. Right. Whoa. Yeah. So Pandora's box is open. The cat's out of the bag. Yeah. There's no way to put the genie back in the bottle. Yeah. I can use three things piled up on top of each other like that. Yeah. And so now the future is like, how are we going to handle this? And world society is not necessarily doing well. But how as Christians do we do with this? So isn't that really kind of the important thing is that as Christians, we need to be aware of the details and, uh, you know, to learn about the morality that's behind what's going on. Am I right? Yeah, we, we have to be informed. I know a lot of people say, you know, you can't play God. That's not really a good argument. It's, you know, once you're not, you can't play God, that is true, but in this case, it's too late, it's already being done, now how do we have an informed response? So now when you talk about playing God, I mean, you know, biblically, God gave us dominion over what he created. But not over other humans. I, I agree, but here, you know, we, we have doctors that will go ahead and set broken bones, mm -hmm. that will, uh, you know, do things that will heal people. And certainly this technology has the capacity to do those kind of things. Yeah, I just read um, just this morning in yeah. Science Magazine uh, an announcement that a person with sickle cell anemia yes. and a person with beta thalassemia had both been helped. What they did is they, they took blood out, they genetically modified it, and put it back in the person. Right. And they, they went a long time before they needed another blood transfusion. That's really cool. That is amazing. Yes. It's shocking and, and something that wouldn't have even been considered possible fairly recently. Yeah. So it can be used for good. But it even when it's for bad. But even when it's used for good, though, there are still open yeah. moral questions. Right. Like, you know, how many embryos had to be experimented on before we found out how to do this thing? Exactly. That's a tough question. Right. And one of the other questions things that's coming up now is, you know, why not genetically modify a, a human baby to make it better? Right. Less sick, superior, smarter, faster. I mean, those genes are already in the population. You're not doing anything different. You're just giving your kid a little boost. Right. But what happens if that child doesn't develop properly? What's going to happen in, yeah. the, in the doctor's office? Oh, your kid's, you know, has X, Y, or Z. I strongly suspect there'll be a selective abortion happening here. So it has some big implications that, that Christians implications. in particular, we need to be aware of that. We need to be equipped with information, right? Yes. So if you want to know more about this topic of uh, genetics, and in particular, the morality that goes along with it, go to our website, creation.com. We have a section on genetics, a section on morality. You can look up the article that Rob and I wrote. Uh, just do a search for the words unnatural selection, and you can read more about that. If you enjoyed this episode, we have a previous video where we asked the question, did the historical Adam and Eve really exist? So thanks for watching, subscribe to this channel, and we'll catch you next time.